In this one, we're going to have a think about how we can speed up the performance of our application by adding some caching. So I'm in the products controller, and if you look at our query here where we get the promotions, at the moment for what we've created, we've only actually put three in there, but they could actually come back with like 100 or something like that. And so for that reason, you might want to consider caching uh, that data so that the data's in memory. Say, for example, if you have a popular product, uh, lots of people are making requests for it, then instead of having to hit the database every time, you can just uh, make the request, it'll reach into memory, grab the promotion straight from memory, and it should speed up the process a whole lot more. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience, and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon, and welcome. So let's go ahead first of all by grabbing cache from Composer. So all we need to do, this is a Symphony Cache by the way, is Composer require cache. Okay, and so now if we go to our Composer JSON, we should see a new entry in there for cache. So here we go on this line here, line 16 on my Composer JSON Symphony cache. Okay, so let's go and start putting this to use. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to say cache interface. The way that this will work is that we'll create a cache key and first off, uh, the code will look in the cache for that key and if it finds it, it will return the item for that key. If it cannot find that key in the cache, then what it will do, it will then go ahead and query the database and return the promotions. But at the same time, set the promotions as the item for the key which we were trying to obtain. So, uh, a demonstration will probably help you understand that better. So what we're going to do here is say promotions equals, and then we're going to say cash get. And so we're looking to get a specific key. You can name this key whatever you like, but give it a name which is meaningful to you. So what we're going to say is find valid for product. So we'll stick with the same name here and then append an ID onto the end of that. So find valid for product, and then this is going to be the ID of the product. We'll put another hyphen in between there. Okay, so like I say, first it looks in the cache for a specific key. If it is found, it will return the item for that key. If not, what we want to do is call a function or call a callback. And so here I'm saying item interface and that will represent an item in the cache. And it's at this point here, so we're, if we're hitting this callback function, it means we have what is called a cache miss. If we actually found the key in the cache, you have a cache hit, but here we have a cache miss. And so this is where we want to actually perform our logic and go and actually grab the data from the database instead. So as you can see inside of our callback, we're missing a couple of pieces here, which is product and lowest price inquiry. So I'm gonna drop these in here. The way we can get them into our callback function is we say use, and then in parentheses, just pass each one. So product, and then it's gonna be lowest price inquiry. I'll drop this onto its own line because we're running out of space. And then here, instead of promotions equals, what we want to do is actually return this. So this is where it's making the query to the database and then it's going to return this and at the same time it will actually set it as the item on this key in the cache. Let's have some feedback so that we know whether this is working or not. So like I say, the first time that we run this, the item won't be in the cache because we've not actually cached it yet. So we should hit the callback function because it is a cache miss and so for that reason what we'll do is we'll say var dump miss and so we should see this the second time when we run it because after the first time that item then gets placed in the cache under this key and so the second time the callback should not be called so let's go and run this for the first time in postman i'll hit send okay so we've got our results back here and as you can see at the very top this is what we var dumped and so we're getting 
miss because it's the first time that we've been run. However, it, that callback will now have been called and we should have saved the data into the cache or save the item to the cache. So when I press send now, I no longer get miss because the callback is no longer being called and so this var dump will not be hit. That's working nicely, but if we go back to our controller here, uh, we know we're gonna get rid of this anyway eventually, so I'm not too worried about that, but if we look at the rest of it, it's becoming what is known as a fat controller. There's a lot of information in here. Does all this uh, information regarding caching need to be here, or can it be abstracted away so that we can do it with just a smaller amount. Let's consider our options there. So one thing we might think of, it will be to maybe drop it into this valid for product on the repository. Don't recommend that you do that, but let's have a look at what that would look like and what the con think about what the consequences might be. So uh, I'm just gonna quickly throw some code in here, which I'll remove. So uh, we're saying we'll have a cache there and so we'll need a private cache property if I can spell it right and then we'd set the property here so this cache equals cache and then we might think in our for uh, find valid for product we might first decide that we want to look in the cache and then if we don't find it we could then return the result of this query however there's a few reasons why this would not be a very good solution. For a start, repositories, they're really for just dealing with your database. And so we're getting a bit of a responsibility creep here, aren't we? Because we're looking in the cache first and then we're looking in the database, which I don't like. And also consider if we're testing this, if we decide we're gonna set up a test database, so maybe just a test MySQL or some in-memory database, would also then when we hit this method would also probably need to have some kind of test caching set up and it's already becoming quite a messy solution so i wouldn't mix that I'd keep your repository as it is uh, and just hit your sql database using this so what i'm going to do is delete all of this stuff because not only that it was also a little bit inside out wasn't it because the first thing we want to do is look in the cache and if we don't find it in the cache then look in the database whereas here we're hitting a database repository method and then looking in the cache and then looking in the database the whole flow just wasn't very good. I like to try my best not to turn my code inside out or have messy logic paths like that. If you think about the flow of this what we want to do is look in the cache if it isn't in the cache then look in the database. And so what I think will be a nice little solution here will be to have a custom cache, so a promotions cache, which has its own find valid for product method, which does what we want it to do. It'll look in the cache. If it doesn't find it there, it'll just get it from the database. And so I'd like to reduce this down to a single line, which looks something like this. So we'll call it promotion cache and then we'll call a method called find a valid for product off of that cache, which means that I should be able to get rid of all of this stuff here, and that will give me what I need. So let's go ahead and build that now. Inside of source, I'm gonna create a directory, which I shall call cache. And then inside of there, I'll create a class called promotion cache. Let's think about what this will look like and what we'll need. So I'm gonna create a constructor. We know we're gonna to need to look in the application cache. So that was cache interface. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use promoted properties here because I'm on uh, PHP 8.1 so I can do that. And so there I'm actually um, injecting that and also setting a property called cache at the same time. And we're also gonna need our promotion repository. So I'm gonna do the same thing there. And then we need a public function, find valid for product. 
and then we'll think about our arguments in a second but I just want to drop in this code which we had in our controller and that should guide us on what we're going to need. Okay let's just work through it piece by piece. So here where we have our key and I see that we also have the product so we're going to need a product and then it says here that I need a lowest price inquiry but if we look at this all we're doing is getting a request date off of that so let's just pass in a request date so that will be string request date and then I'll work through this so we're going to be quite explicit here we'll say key equals sprint f So product get ID, so what happens there is the product ID or this percent %D will be replaced by the product ID and then I can just pass the key in there. For cash it's going to be this cash. So use product and request date instead of entity manager get repository when here we can say this repository find valid for product and then here where we actually create a date from our request date string we can say request date I'll just remove these comments here and here we're actually just going to return this cache get key so again it's working exactly the same hopefully you were able to follow that refactoring there we're going to look in the cache for this key if it's found, great, return the item, the cache item, otherwise call this callback, which is in turn going to hit the promotion repository and get us the data that we need. I'm going to leave this var dump in here for the time being so that we can still demonstrate uh, that it's working like it was before. Let's go back to Postman and ping this just to make sure everything is working. Okay, so we've definitely missed a big step there because our controller has absolutely no knowledge about this so we need to go back to our products controller and here instead of cache interface we're going to change this to promotion cache which is the same name that we gave it here if you remember our argument so we need the product and then we need the lowest price inquiry get request date Okay, back over to Postman to try again. Great stuff, so we're getting our data back. There's actually a way that we can clear an item out of the cache. And so that way, uh, it means that when we run it again, then we should see a cache miss. And so that is Symphony console cache colon pool colon delete. And then the name of the cache pool, we'll talk more about cache pools in the next one because I think this one's overrunning. And then if you remember the name of our key, we said valid for product. So this is the name of the key. Obviously, that is the key ID. So if I run this, then we should see an item deleted from the cache. Okay, so I meant to call this valid for product. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll actually change the name there and so we'll delete that and then we'll rename it I think So find valid for product. So as you can see that item has been successfully deleted Okay, I'm going to change the name of that So I want it to be called valid for product not find valid for product And so if we go and run this now, we should see a miss Okay, so we get the miss if we run it again hit send and just like so. I'll finish off by just tidying this up a bit so I'll remove that file dump there. We'll do our return type declaration so this can be null or an array. A quick look at our controller, we know we're going to remove this when we actually do our error handling and the rest of it is still quite lean, it's just a handful of lines. Uh, reads quite logically, we deserialize, we find the product uh, we then set the product onto the inquiry. We find the valid promotions for the product. We try and retrieve them from the cache and we've abstracted all the detail away there and reduced it down to one line in our controller, nice and clean. And then we apply the promotions, reserialize and send it back to the end user. 
By default, Symfony uses something called file caching, which is pretty good and it's a nice default to get you up and running, but it is the slowest type of caching. So in the next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up Redis using Docker. Uh, so I'll show you how you can do that and how you can set that up. And I'll also show you stuff that you can do with this item here if you want to set an expiry on your cache. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.